Welcome to Adv Advice for Grad Students, or What I Wish I Knew When I Was a First or Second Year uh, Grad Student. Uh, uh, welcome today. I am your host, Phil Hahn. Uh, I'm at the U.S. Naval War College, an MIT SSP gra grad. And today we have with us a fellow alum, Eric Sand, uh, uh, who finished in uh, uh, 21. He happens to be an assistant professor with, along with me at the U.S. Naval War College. And so I'll give a blanket disclaimer. The views expressed here today are our own and not that of the DOD or the services. Uh, Eric, welcome. Welcome to Advice for Grad Students. Thanks, Phil. It's great to be here. Yeah, and so today's topic is on uh, balancing life. And so uh, my first question to you, uh, Eric, is um, uh, why did you pick this topic of the list of 24 different topics? Uh, why, why, why was this on one of your lists? Yeah, so I think this was near the top of my list for a couple of reasons. Uh, first, because it seems to me it's one of the questions that grad students are often most concerned about. I spent some of my time as a grad student as an IRF, which is MIT sort of graduate peer counseling. Uh, and in my meetings, I often heard concerns about uh, work-life balance. And I also uh, spent a lot of time doing different things during grad school. Uh, I, I was a Navy Reserve officer. And for my fourth year in grad school, I got called away uh, for a year. So I had to think very hard about how I was going to balance my outside commitments with the obligations I had during grad school. Uh, and I hope I can share some of those lessons and other folks might, might find them useful. Oh, OK. Well, that's great. I always like to hear uh, with the topics that we invited people to talk about why they pick different topics. And so let's go ahead and, and get into it. So what what advice do you give to, to a first or second year uh, grad student on balancing life? So I think the, the headline piece of advice that I would have is you can do more than you think you can, but not as much as you want. I think about four buckets of where I spent my time when I was a grad student, both in my first couple of years and further on. So first is just like your life, right? Whatever you enjoy spending your time doing, you want to spend your time on. Uh, the second uh, is grad school, obviously. The third is what I would call the academic or the professional bucket. And I'll talk about how I think that's different than grad school work a little bit. Uh, and then the fourth, uh, which depends on sort of your situation, is uh, if you choose to do anything for some extra income besides your grad school stipend. I think that's a useful way to think about the four buckets on which you'll, you spend your time. Uh, so first, let me talk about why I think the school bucket is different than the academic and professional bucket. So school is obviously everything you need to do to get your work done for your classes. But there's a lot more that could relate to your academic or your professional work besides just getting your classes done. That can be working groups. That can be uh, special summer um, programs that you might choose to go to, uh, like uh, IQMR or IPSCON or uh, RAN summer internship. It might not be something that's explicitly academic. As I said earlier, I was in the Navy Reserve. I had to balance my reserve uh, obligations. And I think it's useful to think about those things as separate because there's a lot of variation in that academic and professional bucket for different, uh, different people. Okay, well, you've, you've given us a, a list of the four buckets, but you haven't given us that insight. What is it that you learn? Uh, what kind of challenges that you had in order to kind of do the prioritization. Absolutely. Uh, so I think the biggest challenge is that all of these things are competing for your time. So uh, the first most important lesson that I learned is you have to learn to say no. Uh, there are gonna be way more things that you wanna do and way more things that people want you to do than you're gonna have the time to be able to accomplish. Uh, uh, your school bucket is going to be the thing that you probably feel like you have to spend the most time on. And I think one of the most important skills is to figure out uh, what are the places where you can get efficiencies uh, in that amount of time you spend on your school work. When I was an undergraduate, I had a professor who told me, uh, take more classes than you can possibly do the reading for, because then you'll have to learn uh, how to analyze those texts and pull them apart without reading every single word. And that's an important lesson for grad school. As an undergrad, I still read every word, even though I tried to take his advice. As a grad student, I absolutely had to learn how to pull those things apart. On the academic professional side, 
I tried to think about uh, what specifically were the goals that I was trying to accomplish. So there were a lot of talks that I thought would be really interesting that I said no to. There are programs that I participated in that I was really happy that I did because they helped me connect with people outside of MIT. I found that something that was uh, particularly useful to be able to do as I chose to make those uh, balancing decisions. Similarly, when I went to fill that income bucket, I tried to find places that overlapped with other things that I was doing. So whether that was taking extra orders for the Navy Reserve that helped me uh, kill two birds with one stone there, or some professional programs that provided a stipend uh, to kill two birds with one stone, or because on my life bucket, I worked as a tutor in an undergraduate house, uh, which helped me do two things there as well. Okay, well, you, you mentioned, I was getting ready to ask you about the life bucket. I, I, I happen to know, I've met your lovely wife. Uh, I assume that some of that courtship took place during grad school. So uh, what kind of challenges did you face in the other aspects of your life that didn't have to do with that professional uh, a part of life? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, grad school is uh, great in that you have lots of flexibility to control your time and where you're physically located, uh, but also has lots of constraints because there are lots of things to fit in that uh, time that you're trying to do. So uh, for me, uh, it was finding, I, I tried to find defined activities that I knew how much time that they would take that allowed me to do uh, more social things. So I love singing, so I joined a choir, but I knew exactly how much time that choir was going to take and how to schedule it. As I mentioned, I worked as a tutor, but a lot of that tutor work was done while I was at meals, which was something that I already needed to do so I could overlap uh, that as well. And so those types of things helped me uh, free up time to spend on other uh, sorts of things. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I can offer any dating advice uh, other than to say the fact that uh, the folks that I dated lived relatively close to where I did meant that I didn't spend a lot of time commuting. <laughs> okay, well, I, I'm going to ask you a question because uh, learning has a lot to do first with failing. And so um, part of this is what you what you wish you knew. So can you give an example of a uh, an initial failure you had with life balance and how you adjusted to it over time? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my first year in grad school, I lived uh, in Medford and I had spent a lot of time calculating exactly how long my commute was going to be and, and the routes that I would go. And what I figured out by the end of my first year uh, is despite the fact that I really liked how much space I had out there, uh, it was I was spending way too much time going back and forth to MIT. And that by the time I got home, I never wanted to go back into Cambridge to do anything social. And so after that, I moved uh, into Cambridge, uh, which allowed me to be able to do a lot more both on campus to be able to go home and then come back out. So that was a major lesson uh, that I learned that first year. Okay, well, great. So we're coming up to about the last minute of this lesson. So I want to turn it to you. Uh, one last comment of what, uh, any other thoughts that you have to grad students as they're trying to get this idea of a life balance together? Yeah. The, la the one last piece of advice I would specifically say is make sure you reserve time during your summers to do something fun. I always plan to do way too many things during my summers, whether they were personal or professional, I was never able to get uh, all of them done. But I think student students often feel lots of pressure that there are all these things they're supposed to be doing during their summer. I think it's really important you set aside at least a month of every summer uh, for something that you're going to do that that's, that's fun. Okay, well, great. Well, thank you so much for your time today on Advice for Grad Students. All right, take care. Thanks, Bill.